open mic. Wow, so according to the report issued by the House, the leaked emails that led to the firing of, uh, the resignation of Raiders coach John Gruden was leaked by Dan Snyder and the Commanders. And here I thought it was Raiders fans this entire time. Welcome to Open Mic. We like to start the show with a, a few stories or a hot take on a story you're not likely to see anywhere else. I'm from gorgeous Prince George's, and now I spill the tea in DC so you know these jokes come from a place of love if, in fact, that was something I was capable of. Let's start things off right here in DC. USC quarterback and DC native Kayla Williams has been named the Associated Press Player of the Year and is one of the four finalists for the Heisman Trophy, which He's expected to win. Ranked number one nationally in passing touchdowns and points per game, Williams is one of four finalists for the sport's top honor, the Heisman Trophy. It's pretty awesome to think that uh, our area has, uh, has helped produce uh, a, uh, uh, a Heisman Trophy candidate and possibly a Heisman Trophy winner. Williams got his start here at Gonzaga College High School in Washington, D.C., playing for head coach Randy Trivers. It's amazing. To, to, to see him do uh, some of these things at the next level that, that he did regularly here. I want to congratulate Kayla Williams, and I will say this. If it weren't for that injury in the Pac-12 championship game, they would have won and Utah would have lost and those QAnon message boards would have been way less excited. But you, start practicing that Heisman pose because you got this. A lot of great talent has come from the area, and it is cool to see what Caleb Williams is doing. He's making D.C. proud. If he wins the Heisman, by the way, he'll be a made man in the city. Free Ben's Chili Bowl for life. But wait till retirement to take advantage of all that, Caleb, because half smokes covered in chili cannot be good for an elite athlete's diet or anyone's diet for that matter. And I have, I have high hopes for you playing on Sundays. Once again, congratulations on becoming a Heisman Trophy finalist. You're in very elite company, Caleb. Let's head to Silicon Valley for this next story, where Twitter is under investigation after reports claiming the company converted several areas of their headquarters into makeshift bedrooms for employees working long hours. So let me find out Twitter is out here hosting sleepovers and mandatory sleepovers at that. Elon has owned Twitter for less than two months and he has already turned it into a sweatshop. This woman, by the way, is on the floor in a sleeping bag on the floor, a shiny sleeping bag, mind you, but still a sleeping bag on the floor. Come on, Twitter. Come on, Twitter. What are you doing? San Francisco's Department of Building Inspection is looking into things for possible code violations. And yes, you heard that correctly. Building codes might be what stopped this. Not labor laws, not human decency, but building codes. This whole situation is wild. Now, I personally am going to miss Twitter when Elon Musk drags that platform all the way into the ground. So for now, enjoy all the comedy on black Twitter because tomorrow is not guaranteed. Let's stay in the Bay Area, San Francisco to be exact for this next story, where the city's council voted to bar police from using robots to kill. That's right, robots to kill. What kind of RoboCop mess is this? Just last week, the council voted to approve a police proposal that allowed law enforcement to deploy remote controlled ground based robots to use deadly force in cases where there is imminent risk to life. As you can probably guess, this was pretty controversial. Police can't be trusted to not kill people on their own. They don't need access to murder robots. They're putting up record numbers without tech, like Barry Bonds in his prime. Yes, I'm speaking your Bay Area language. Besides, anybody who's ever seen a sci-fi movie knows this won't end well. Does anybody want San Francisco PD making first-generation Terminators? They won't stand a chance against Skynet. They should just focus on uh, less lethal force in general. How about starting with that instead of jumping straight to killer droids. Now, I am glad the San Francisco City Council actually listened to the people and fixed their earlier mistake of letting the police build a robot army, because you know those things come off the assembly line with a racial profiling app pre-installed. Let's head to Minnesota for this last story, where the State Pharmaceutical Board filed a civil lawsuit alleging that cannabis companies sold edible products that contain more than 50 times the state's legal limit for THC. 
So to our fellow Minnesotans, we encourage you to be cautious. Cautious about consumption of recently legal THC edibles. After the Minnesota Board of Pharmacy in a new lawsuit alleges three businesses were selling products with 50 times the legal limit that looked like candy to kids, which is prohibited under the law. Does that say death by gummy bears? And by the way, just listening to that press conference made me feel like I had had death by gummy bears. You can't accuse them of false advertising. I'll say this, 50 times the legal limit of THC is absolutely insane. Even people who love weed don't wanna be that high. That is rendered helpless high. Your couch is holding you hostage at that point. Now, the other product label I saw in that clip, by the way, said wonky weeds. And you know, a good rule of thumb is to never put anything, quote, wonky in your body. You know, for me, when I hear the word wonky used to describe something, I think whatever this is, it's about to malfunction. Like I wouldn't drive a car with wonky brakes, but I would describe my, um, um, I would describe my singles platform as being pretty wonky. Usually I'm advocating on behalf of legal cannabis, but you can't think it's a good idea to get people 50 times higher than usual. Now, there's nothing wrong with cannabis, but like everything else, moderation is key. Now you should never be so high, you start wondering if somebody put drugs in your drugs. Now my favorite story today, it's gotta be Caleb Williams because everything else today was really disturbing, especially that killer robot thing. That made me, that made me want wonky weeds.